following the annulment of June 12 election and the subsequent detention of her husband, al Haja Kudra at Abiola, transformed into a strong pro-democratic campaigner fighting for the restoration of the husband's mandate. Her campaign against the military junta of General Sani Abacha was believed to have displeased the general, resulting in her subsequent assassination on the 4th of June 1996. In this edition of Hispul Media, we bring to you the full story of how al Haja Kudrat Abiola was assassinated. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Hispul Media In-Depth History. A brave woman, al Haja Kudrat Abiola came into this world in 1951 in the northwestern city of Zaria, present-day Kaduna State. Kudrat Abiola was born with the name Kudrat Olayinka Adeyemi and was the second woman to have married her husband. But at the time of her death, she was Abiola's most senior wife. She attended the Muslim Girls High School in Ejebode in Ogun State. Testimonies of her time at Muslim Girls High School in Ejebode indicates the evolution of a powerful mind with leadership qualities that would later propel her to become the head prefect in her final year. It has been established that al Haja Kudrat Abiola did not attend university education but was married to a business mogul, Chief MKO Abiola, at the age of 21. It was a successful marriage that produced seven children. Available facts revealed that she used her bride price to pay for the education of her two sisters. Partly in response to the circumstances of her own history, Kudrat Abiola adopted many social causes and was to become a prime supporter of the educational program of the Ansaruddin Muslim movement in Nigeria. Kudrat was also a successful businesswoman. Ordinarily tuned to private life, the military annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, believed to have been won by her husband, brought Kudrat into pro-democracy movement. The movement was not without consequences either. In 1994, Abiola was incarcerated and kept in solitary confinement, with only a Quran as his companion for claiming his presidential mandate from the military junta. Despite the danger posed by the military, Kudrat was said to have provided clear leadership in this period of general confusion following the annulment of the election and the incarceration of the husband. She stepped forward with a conviction that the military's action amounted to violation of the fundamental human rights of Nigerians to elect their own leaders. Her participation inspired a new level of activism in Nigeria's pro-democracy struggle. al Haja Kudurat Abiola mobilized market women, students, activists and other human rights community to fight for democracy. In the summer of 1994, Kudurat was actively involved in moving and sustaining the oil workers' 12-week strike action against the military government. The strike, which succeeded in isolating and weakening the government, was the longest in African history by oil workers. In December of 1995, when the pro-democracy group decided to march for freedom in Lagos, Kudra joined such esteemed nationalists as Anthony Inahoro at the forefront of the march, braving the bullets of government forces that were sent to intimidate them. Her fight was essentially for the release of her husband and the restoration of his mandate, which was annulled by General Ibrahim Badambosi Babangida in 1993. Habiola was detained after declaring himself President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces following the June 12 election and the subsequent annulment. While Kudrat was busy championing the cause against the military dictatorship in Nigeria, her husband was in jail on charges of treason. Her action against the military government made her the biggest foe of the military government of the late General Sani Abacha. On June 4, 1996, around 3 p.m., Kudrat was cruising on her white Mercedes-Benz salon car along the streets of Lagos. Little did she know that the worst was going to happen sooner than later. Her life would be cut short by the bullets of the assassins. She was attacked in her car by unknown gunmen along Lagos Ibadan Expressway, allegedly on the orders of the military government of late General Sani Abacha. This happened few days before the anniversary date of Nigeria's decision to out or to vote out military regime. 
According to different accounts, her mother was ordered and then carried out by six men. Mrs. Abiola died in her car from machine gunfire along with her driver. Her personal assistant, who was later accused of being involved with the assassins, was in the car but left on hold. It was linked that the car slowed down in Ikeja when her assailant suddenly opened fire on her and gunned her down. The assassin's bullet was said to have hit her on the forehead and smashed her brain. About four shots were reportedly fired at her. One hit the target's driver in the mouth and crossed to his shoulder. Kudurat was rushed to the Hybro Echo Hospital in Ikeja, Lagos. All efforts made by the medical team to save her life failed, and Abiola died with a gaping bullet wound on her forehead. She was 44 years old. Her driver, too, did not survive the attack, but were shot at close range. While she and her driver died, her personal assistant left the car on hot. The weapon used for the execution of her killing was an F-90 submarine gun made in Belgium and described as a selective fire defense personal weapon. It has an integrated reflector sight system, backup ion sights, fully ambidextrous control, meaning it can be easily used by both the right or left-handed shooters and can fire about 900 rounds per minute to a maximum distance of 1,800 meters. Her husband remained detained without charge even after her death and would later die under suspicious circumstances on the day he was supposed to be released on June 7, 1998. At the time of her death, an anti-military rule radio known as Radio Democracy and later renamed Radio Kudurat had just been established and was based in Norway. The radio was backed by the United States, British, Swedish, Danish and Norwegian governments to help in bringing an end to military dictatorship in Nigeria. In order to penetrate the security network of the Abiola family, it was learned that the killer squad went through her personal assistant, Alhaji Latif Shofolahan. This may have been the reason he was not killed by the assailant, even though he was in the vehicle with them. However, this could not be proven in court notwithstanding. Prior to this time, there had been two attempts to assassinate Kudra. The first attempt was planned to take place right inside the residence of MKO Abiola. However, when the assassins discovered how dangerous this could be, they abandoned the plan, but they never gave up in their evil plot. They maintained surveillance of their primary target, Al Haja Kudurath Abiola. In a smoke screen designed to distract the general public following her assassination, the Nigerian military government offered a sum of $45,000 as reward for information leading to the arrest of the killers. The government, however, blamed the killing on the increasing spiral of violence and terrorism in the country. Prior to the assassination, Kudurad was reported to have complained of threat to her life, stating that unknown men were trailing her vehicle. After the assassination, the military government announced that it would send a high-powered delegation to the Abiola family to commensurate with them over the brutal assassination of their matriarch. But investigation into the killing traced the killer bullet to the personal armory of Major Hamza Al Mustafa, former chief security officer to the late detector General Sani Abacha. The assignment, it is believed, was supposed to be executed with military precision and without any trace whatsoever. The operation, which was codenamed Operation Chika Aiki, meaning finish the job in Hausa language, was to be executed by sharpshooters and marksmen of the regime. Major Hamza Al Mustafa, who was the chief security officer of General Sani Abacha, was arrested in connection with the murder of Al Haja Kudurat Abiola. In October 1998, Major Hamza Al Mustafa appeared in court with General Abacha's son, Mohammed, charged with the murder and attempted murder of Abiola. During the court proceedings, Mohammed Abdul, aka Kataku, who gave evidence as prosecution witness, narrated how late Kudrat Abiola's personal assistant, Lahaji Latif Shofolahan, gave his boss away to the assailants. 
He said Shofolahan also identified the houses of other personalities who had been marked for elimination. The witness also traced the movement of the killer squad in its murderous mission that took them to the Lagos residence of Lieutenant General Bamayi, Mr. James Dambaba, former Lagos State Commissioner of Police, and the office of Lieutenant Colonel Jibrin Balayakubu, the former Zamfara State Military Administration. He further told the court how Mohamed Abacha gave him and another member of the strike force $10,000 each to flee the country when investigation commenced during Nolichigono Basenjo's administration on the various political assassinations in the country. Bamayi, Dambaba, Al Mustafa, Yakubu, and Rabo Lawal were all charged to a Lagos High Court in the year 2000 for the same offense. However, as the case dragged on for too long, General Ishai Abami applied for a separate trial and was granted. During the trial, the self-confessed killer, Sergeant Barnabas Jabila, aka Sergeant Rogers, said he was obeying orders from his superior, Major Hamza Al Mustafa. Sergeant Rogers confessed that the contract to eliminate Kudrat was given by the Chief Security Officer to General Sani Abaja, Major Hamza Al Mustafa, to Rabo Lawa, who was in charge of the mobile police force at the presidential villa. Rogers also said the killer team was then provided with Uzi rifles, complete with silencer and cash for the operation. This was said to have happened in the presence of Mohamed Abacha, son of the head of state. He claimed to have had direct involvement in the assassination along with Rabo Lawal. Sergeant Rogers would later confess to have been involved in three assassinations as well. While the assassination of Kudurata Biola was successful, the other two, the attempted murder of Nadeko chieftain Abraham Adesaya and Alex Ibru, failed. After the gunmen successfully got their target killed, each member of the killer team was reportedly given the sum of 50,000 naira, $250, by Major Amza Al Mustafa for a job well done. Meanwhile, in the month of May 2001, a federal high court in Abuja declared that Mohamed Abacha had no case to answer in the Kudurat Abiola charges and was roped in simply on circumstantial evidence. He was released and he went to Kanu where he was treated to a hero's welcome by hordes of Abacha supporters. On the 30th of January 2012, a Lagos High Court sitting at Igboshiri convicted Major Hamza Al Mustafa and Latif Shofulahan over the murder of Abiola. They were also sentenced to death by hanging. However, after a successful appeal, they were discharged and acquitted of the crime by the Lagos Division of the Appeal Court on Friday, July 12, 2013. The appellate court decided that there was not enough evidence to incriminate Al Mustafa in the murder of the late Kudurat Abiola. The verdict of the lower court was consequently overturned. The presiding judge, Justice Rita Pemu, accused the lower court judge, Justice Mojishola Dada, of being struck to secure a conviction by all means. Consequently, setting both Al Mustafa and Shofolahan free. Notwithstanding the death of Mrs. Abiola, she remained a symbol of Nigeria's struggle for democracy. Although Kudrat was assassinated in 1996, it would not be until the presidency of Olushigono Basinjo that investigations were properly launched into the affair. However, all the senior police and military chiefs implicated in the assassination denied having anything to do with it. Al Mustafa denied giving Rogers any orders to kill anybody, and the former army chief, Lieutenant General Ishai Abami, washed his hands of any illegal operations. On his path, Mohamed Abaja claimed that he only saw Al Mustafa giving some weapons to Sergeant Rogers for an operation, but he was not aware of the operation and did not take part in the killing of anybody. Rogers, however, maintained that he was saying the truth and claimed that he got the weapons to kill Alex Ibru from General Bamiyi, who was the Lagos garrison commander and even got cover from the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, who ordered the diversion of a police patrol team away from the premises of Guardian newspapers. One thing is, however, difficult to deny. The assassination of al Haja Kudurat Abiola was an inside job of the regime in power at the time. 
You may want to check this video here, where we expose the classified document showing how General Sani Abacha approved the execution of Ken Sarowiwa in 1995. Let us know your thoughts in comment section. Don't forget to book the like button on this video and subscribe to Hispel Media. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.